We still do seven NUFC Matters show a week for free. But if you want to help support NUFC Matters, then there are a few ways of doing it. Hit the like button on each live broadcast and video. This helps the channel grow. Hit the subscribe button and select the all notifications bell so you don't miss a single show. If you want to help us financially, then you can join the channel using this button with the membership starting at $1.99 a month. Or you can drop us a donation in the chat using a super sticker. We're also looking for sponsors. If you'd like your brand advertised on the flies for the show and featured during the ad break, then email john at nufcmatters.com to arrange today. You're the joke, the expert, the voice, but you want to be proud. A vision of weakness, you know, but your voice is so loud. I'm the butt of your joke, cause I draw more girls you hang round. You kill to make your imprints on my soul. Good evening, welcome to NUFC Matters Fans Forum. It's Monday night and uh, we are all sober and present. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> key word there, sober. Uh, good evening to George, to Brad Pitt, to Darren, to Kev, to Spenny Mac and to Ian. And good evening to you and all the mods in the chat. Uh, plenty to talk about as we build up to Newcastle playing West Ham at the weekend. And um, that's where we're going to start. We're going to start with the, the running lads. Um We've now got uh, the, the run into the end of Newcastle United season. And, and George, obviously, will come to you first. But we've got uh, West Ham, then we've got Everton, Fulham, Tottenham, Crystal Palace, Sheffield United, Burnley, Brighton, Brentford, Manchester United. And uh, that takes us to the end of the season. Ten cup finals, George. And uh, a chance for Newcastle to, to get back-to-back -back qualification in Europe, OK? Probably won't be the Champions League unless there's a, a miracle happens. But a chance to get into Europe nonetheless. Um, it, it's, it's still all to play for, George. That's the, that's the angle I'm going for tonight. Uh, you know, what, what's, what's your yeah. views? What, what should Eddie Howe do in this run-in, in this next 10 games, to get Newcastle United back into Europe? Well, he's, he's going to have more players available. That's the first thing. But the other thing is that list of teams that uh, that you read out, with the players we've got available, they're all winnable games. The only ones that are going to give us any difficulty, real difficulty, are Spurs and Manchester United. And even them, if we're on form, we can still, we can still get th those points as well. So it's a golden opportunity for them to, to put their season right if, if, if he can sort them out. Sort them out. Well, he's he's got to find some way of getting back into them the the energy and the um, and the ability that they had at the start of the season and certainly that they had last season. Evidence of of uh, the younger ones that have been coming in now and again, like Livermento and, and uh, Hall, even um, they're not do they wouldn't be doing too bad. They wouldn't let we down. In fact, uh, some of their players been been quite revealing, I think, and. Uh, so, I, I, as you know, I'm always Mr. Optimistic for Newcastle United. I think it's a golden opportunity to get the season back online and for Eddie Howe to get the, 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 the team firing on, on all cylinders again. Because we're, we're hitting Missy at the moment. Anybody, I, I mean, the game that we had against Wolves, I thought that that was it, we're sorted. But we weren't. The next game, we were just as bad as, as we had been before. He's got to get that. Um, that inconsistency out of them. There's something not quite uh, hitting the mark at the moment, and uh, he's he's got a chance to sort them out. Some of the other things that have happened, well, Butman, we've just got to accept he's not there. But let's face it, we've we've got other centre backs who could fill in. They're not they're not his class when he's on form, but they do a good job for when 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 they're needed. Um, he, he can solve his left back problem by shifting Dan Byrne into the middle uh, out, out the other way and let uh, Lewis Hall or somebody else go to left back. Um, but important thing for me is they're all winnable games. And if you can just get them sorted out, get them playing for each other like they have before, um, there's no reason why we shouldn't go on a run that'll 
that will put the season right. And I'd be disappointed if we don't at least get um, um, a European place of some sort. If we don't, then in the summer comes, um, I think, uh, how, depending where we finish, I think I said this last week or, or maybe it's on another platform, uh, everybody's been talking about this about Eddie Howe and that about Eddie Howe. Um, we won't, decisions about that won't be made in Newcastle. I'm still con confident that uh, PIF will be getting their own football advice back home while they're watching all of this happen. And they'll they'll help to make decisions. And the one thing about it is um, when the Saudis make decisions, they make them quickly and they make them positively. So, um, you know, it, it, it's, an, it's an, a, a golden opportunity to settle everything down. And for Eddie Howe to... Uh, um, cement his position in, in, in Newcastle United, which I'd like him to uh, for the next couple of years, not not just for the next bit of the season, and uh, give us something to smile about because uh, we we'll all need it. Um, uh, some of the stuff off the field's not 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 uh, brilliant at the moment, but uh, let let's get it right on the field, and that's that's where it matters as far as uh, I'm concerned, and. Uh, We've got an opportunity to put the season right in the, those games. All winnable, in my view. What would you do, playing squad-wise, though, George? Um, same question to everybody when we go around. Would, would you give the opportunity now to the likes of Lewis Hall? And, yes, and, because... as I said. When they've, when they've come on for cameos, they've looked quite good. I mean, the one full match, he, nearly full match he had at Manchester United in the, in the Carabao, he, he was brilliant. I couldn't understand why, uh, why he didn't... Uh, Get more time on the pitch. Still convinced there's something in his contract that made that uh, um, uh, limiting limited the time he'd had on the pitch. But we don't know all of that. But the bits that we've seen, he's been brilliant. I mean, when he when he came on the other the other night was it the Chelsea game. He one game he came on, and his first touch was brilliant. Man City. Sorry, Man City. Man City. Yeah. Man City in the court. Does he? Absolutely, his first his first touch was absolutely brilliant, and for a young player that's crucial, you know, for your confidence. If you're going on and you're you're going to get involved in a game, if the first touch is a good one, you're flying. And he was. He looked he looked good from the start. So, um, yeah, he's, he's got to bite the bullet and make his mind up about that. Um, and and uh, um, <coughs> I mean, the other thing I would try, but. Not, not very popular with anybody else, I don't think. Um, Sharp played in uh, in midfield for Switzerland uh, the other night. <laughs> he was brilliant. Um, I, I would uh, try and support Bruno by by uh, uh, dropping Sharp back or something like that. But uh, that's just my opinion. All I'm saying is the players he's got fit, in my opinion, there's enough talent there to win those games. To win and. Uh, um, and, and I certainly would be playing the likes of Hall. Liv Romento would be in the team if we could get him in. And the, the beauty of him is he doesn't have to be right back like like Trippier is. He can play he can play slightly slightly advanced to uh, to Trippier as a as as a, a, a proper winger. Never mind anything else. Again, the goal he scored against Manchester United, which I thought that that was him in the team for a long time, but he's disappeared. Um, and uh, Botman's injury, as I already said, there's enough talent in the club now that Kraft's fit. Um, Kraft and Dummett against Manchester United at the centre backs were a revelation. Well, you know, now and again, if we've got to use those, we've, we've got to bite the bullet and use them. Otherwise, they've got to be on their way. Um, mm. So I think there's enough talent on the uh, in the club and on the bench uh, to win those matches, Steve. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, Chippers, your thoughts on, on the, the, the big games ahead, 10 games to go. Some big teams in there, lots of teams in there playing for something as well. Um, some people often say, well, if you're playing teams below you, it's better, but it doesn't always work like that. So, you know, what, what, what do we need to do to, to, to reignite the season? We need to get back to basics. We need to get back to keeping clean sheets and we need to get back to pressing. Yeah. Our identity last season was keep being solid in defence and pressing from the front. And we've hardly we've done that in really brief glimpses of the season. We haven't done it on a consistent basis. You know, it's 
for me, Eddie Howe's got to have them 10 games run down for him and say, there you go, 30 points, and I won 30 points from them games. Whether people might think I'm being optimistic or not, we went 17 games unbeaten last season. Yeah. Why can't we go and beat yeah. them in the last 10 games? And yeah, the games are played on the grass, not on paper, but the fixtures. I'm sorry, but you'll not get many better ones. Bear in mind, we've only got Tottenham to play out with its so-called big six and and Man U. Um, but are they really anything better than are they better than the ones that we've played? This was I wouldn't say so. I would say they're the, they're games that we should be looking to beat them. I mean, we've won at Old Trafford already right in the League Cup. Why can't we go there and win the league? The Spurs don't frighten me. Um, yeah, they've got good players, but I like to think we've got good players as well. So, uh, listen, Eddie Howe's got to go out and say every game, as you said before, every game's a cup final. You've got to go out there, have that mentality. You know, a lot of, was it five get home and five away? We've got two games coming up at home in 48 hours. You need to be getting six points out of them because obviously we've got everything yeah. on the Tuesday night. Um, sorry, 72 hours. Um, and if you know that this week's going to be crucial with the three games that we've got, um, favorable fixtures. West Ham probably will look and say, Oh, they should have beaten Villa before the break, but that's the thing. What we've had now, we've had a break. I know, likes of Gorn and Bruno, we are in international duty, but there's a lot of players who are not. So for me, they've got no excuse on Saturday. A lot of them should be fresh and raring to go. And the fact that it's at home, everybody should be up for it. And I'll be disappointed if they're not because. If they're not going to be up for having to, most of them having a two week break, coming back to playing the, the first game back at St. James's Park, when are they going to be up for it for the rest, rest of the season? So, to me, there's, there's no excuses. It's as simple as that. And what happens in the summer happens in the summer. We can all have opinions on it. But at the end of the day, PIF make the decisions. And whether what happens, whether they, they keep out for another season, they get the let the replace them with somebody else. We've got to get behind it because if we don't, we're going to end up being a divided fan base again. And you know, it's you know, people agree and disagree with some of the things they do, but it's it's business. It's it's part and parcel of it. If you want to be a big club, you've got to make cutthroat decisions, and that's something that they'll do. But like I said, ten cup finals, thirty points. Let's go and get thirty points, and let's let's get Europa League next season. You know, I can't see why we can't. Okay, Darren, are you as optimistic, and and are you are you thinking a, a little bit of a reboot might save Newcastle season? It's it's a reboot, I, I, but I disagree with uh, Parrot there. I don't think it's a ten cup fans. Just just say we'll go. Yeah, do I, I want to win ten games? But I don't think we will go. We'll go to win ten games. I do think I might get a couple of defeats on the road, um, but not the end of the world. As long as We'll go give 110%, come back to all state pressing, closing down, and try and get a clean sheet. But I'm so superstitious. We'll play West Ham and Tottenham at 12.30. For the record, Newcastle do not do good at 12.30 kickoffs. So that's that's a, a, a jinx, in my opinion. But just can't enjoy the last 10 games there. Can't enjoy it. We'll look for lost Botman, devastated. But you, now do you play Lascelles or do you play Bot Dan Byrne? That's a big decision anyhow. I hope we play Dan Byrne and give Lewis Hall a run out because he, he, he needs it. Or do you play Matty Target? Yeah. Um, Matt Target's back, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So Matt Target again. I think he's more better on the left than Dan Byrne because Lewis Hall will be better. He, he they're more direct. Um, I've heard Tino may be injured. I don't know how true that is. A little whisper. Um. We obviously missed the last game, didn't he? There's, yeah, been very, sure. there's been no there's been no press conferences since then, so we don't know what the situation is. We'll find out oh. or not find out from Eddie on Friday, I guess. Yeah, so, but I'll I'll just say just ten games left, and now I, I want to win every game. But I don't I don't I don't think I will, but I don't think ten cups took off fans a bit strong. Uh, do I want you with a do I want you with a football next year? Me personally, no. I think you need to regroup and then go get next season and try for the top eight next year. That's my honest opinion. Why don't you want European football next year, Darren? I just think it's just we haven't squad the players. We need a massive clear out. And like we need to get rid of like your long staffs and your armorons and your Murphys. Get rid of your damn burns and I like I soft them. 
Um, you, you need to get a new centre half in. You need like. Look, look, look. Sh- that's not going to happen, is it? That's not going to happen. I know happen that, but I just think we need to regroup a little bit. Yeah. And just get a few, a lot more faces in and compete and compete the top, top half of the league. Best of the top six team born. Because it, it, it's getting hot and hot at the end. You know what I mean? I would love to finish it. I would think I, I, I would like to. I would love to. Be, my heart says, my head says yes. My heart says I don't want it. You know what I mean? I'm fifty I'm fifty, but I don't know. I, I, don't, I just don't even got the squad there to, to finish in the top in Europe. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, well, Darren, it's all about opinions. Um, and some some are optimistic, some are pessimistic, some are in the middle. Barry, where are you? I'm I'm looking at it that we've got 10 games to go. To me, there should be no pressure on the team. Nobody expects us to qualify for the Champions League. So if we get anything else on top of it, great. Um, take a bit of pressure off them. I mean, we're, we've gone away. We've done the, the warm weather training, which seems to work the trick every time they go. They seem to come back with a spring in their step. When they do come back with that two weeks break, they should be pretty much injury free, apart from the long term stuff. I don't think we've got. I mean, you know, the, this whole thing of, well, we've achieved 40 points now, so we're not going to get relegated. And anything else is a bonus. You know, the this season's been so dire at times. There's been so many ups and downs. I think just see what we can get for the last 10 games, Steve. It's, it's, they're there for the take. And I mean, we've mentioned it so many times. We've got a reasonable run in. It's not the worst running in the world. So why couldn't Eddie House team put together a few performances? Yeah. And some of the young kids, especially in the in the international games, look fantastic. Why couldn't um, Anthony Gordon drag us along till the end of the season? Lewis Miley looks absolutely. He's he's getting there again. It just I, I don't think we've got anything to lose. I'm quite optimistic for the end of it. I think if if we we'll look at it, that if we don't qualify for Europe. We build in the summer. If we get, I'm I'm the opposite to Darren. I, I think I would any European place we can get is a bonus. After the season we've had, if we qualify for the Europa League, great. I think it would still help bring in players from abroad. I think any European competition gives them something to aim for. And it's been said before, we were in the Champions League. We're never going to win the Champions League in a million years. We're not at that level. Could we win the Europa League? Why not? You know, West Ham have done really well and we've got as good a team as they've got on our day, so why not do it? Well, it's one of those things, isn't it? We've got hard games coming up. The West Ham game, like you said, Steve, will be very much sort of the the killer cure it, really. If we if we don't beat West Ham, then we're starting to slip further and further back. But for me, I think I think we've still got a lot to play for. Yes, we we didn't get to the the uh, cup games that we wanted, but to get to that stage in both cup competitions. And obviously qualify for the Champions League. I think at the end of the deal, we'll look back at this season and think, we did all right. We didn't do that bad this season, the games we've had. But see what happens. Like you say, we, I totally respect Darren. It's all about opinions and what you want. He's not getting rid of Dan Byrne, though. No way. No, no. <laughs> You're not getting rid of gone. long stuff either. You're not getting rid of long stuff. I think no. I think the likeliness, the, the likelihood is that we'll see Almiron go to a, to a country or club of his choice potentially go back to where he came from. Um I, I can see Wilson leaving. Um and, and, and Trippier. I think Trippier will go as well in the summer. I think that's your three big players. I think Bruno will go the Champions League team. I think Bruno will stay. I yeah. think he's I think I think we I think our I think our resolve will get tested with with maybe Zizak because of the goals he scores. But Newcastle are in the Newcastle don't have to sell him and they're also in the market for a, a striker themselves. So if they let Wilson go, they'll certainly not let Isaac go. So you've got to remember Newcastle's not a selling club anymore, and these people are on contract. So from our perspective, you know, I don't think there's as much as there's much there's not much panic, I don't think, but I think there'll be some big players go. There'll be um, you know, there'll, there'll be one or two big names going. There may be an extra European place up for grabs. The news coming out of um the new the news coming out of UEFA is quite interesting in the sense that Manchester United may not be able to compete in Europe next year because of the the takeover that's um, the takeover side of things with Ratcliffe having ownership of another club, um, the, the the company that's taken over Manchester United, twenty five percent shares have have shares in another club, which means Manchester United will be prevented from playing in Europe. So means that anyone finishing below them will of course go up a place. So that will be interesting. 
Um, let's wait and see what happens. Kev, um, 10 cup finals is the way that I described it. Um, I, I think it starts on, on Saturday. And a win on Saturday, back-to-back -back wins, six points, puts the cat amongst the pigeons or the magpie amongst the uh, pigeons, shall we say, and, and Newcastle back in the European hunt. It's absolutely. And the next, out of the next five, we've got three at home. And, you know, then we'll play Tottenham and Palace away. So you've got to look, I'll look at it that way as well. You know, like you said, if you get nine points at home, then you back seven points off uh, Man United. And I just learned about the news, what you just said about Man United not being able to compete in European competitions. A little bit behind on my news today, but um, that's interesting. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't, uh, Cup finals, yes. But at the same time, it's all teams in and, in and around us are fighting for something. And it's not just pride, it's money at the end of the day. Um, where the finish, where, you know, there's the prize money at the end of it, That the, the, you know, from a business perspective. So there's that to consider as well. But all teams are fighting. It's the Premier League. It's not going to, no, there's no easy game, game within the Premier League. But yeah. um, I think if we, obviously, with the, the warm weather training and coming back with a new buoyancy and a bounce about ourselves, like, a, 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 you know, a new manager bounce, if you will, and then we'll be able to to put hopefully push push forward for the like the first 10 games of the season and really go on a good run. And if you do that, yes, the Chipper said 30 points. Well, why not? Why not go for 30 points? Are you yeah. doing that to me, by the way? I'll just do that. No, uh, so no, no, it's the Barry. <laughs> Sorry, no, because I was looking at Ian and he was driving uh, uh, distracting us. No, um, if we set attainable targets, if we set goals every three or four or five games and get points per those games, then I think we'll be, again, pushing a European spot. I'm not saying it's not Champions League. It, it is what it is. But I think if we... Because I think we've got a better squad than most in and around us. So if we get, if we get a, a, you know, consistency of where we play... Um, agree with the, some of the lads in terms of yes, not conceding, yes, high press, yes, all of what we've been ex been had the pleasure of watching over the past two years. But again, is it really uh, sustainable in terms of over 10, 10 games? So Eddie Howe's got to be clever. He's got to be more cute in terms of how he sets his teams up, in my opinion, to get you know horses for courses, if you will, is a good old phrase. So. So yeah, um, look, ten games left. <laughs> give every, give everything, every, give everything that you got in each game, and then when that final whistle blows in May, we'll see where we end up. But I think we'll end up in and around, you know, sixth or seventh or something like that. If if we put a big push towards the end of the season. Okay, Spenny, what's your thoughts? Ten cup finals, or am I talking out my backside? Well, I can't see the way we play at the moment. Um, if, we, if these next three games is the, is the mere priority at the moment, it's two games at home and one away against teams we should be beating. If we don't get results out of there, we're losing a lot of money. I'm in our Premier League uh, position in the league, and the Saudis won't like that losing money. So I'm expecting the worst. To be honest, I'm not. I hope we. I hope we do do something. But I can't see it the way we're playing. I agree with George with Lewis Hall should be playing. And I think Crap should be playing on the right back if Jimmy is still out. And I should I think Game Anderson should have a go instead of Longstaff for me. That's what I think. Okay, Ian. First comment is uh, Rudolph's nose has got a little bit redder over time. Look at Spenny with his antlers there. He's not well, mate. He's not well. I know. I know, Listen. and I've, re I, I, I've, I've got to say, I feel really, really sorry for him. <laughs> Stop picking on the lad. I love it, man. I love it. Um, no, get well soon, Spenny. Uh, don't know where to start. I'm, I'm going to jump up to uh, Daz's comments first. Every, yep. I disagree with however much I love Daz. He knows I love him, but I disagree. Every, every game is a cup final now. Um, we're, at, we're we're going to have a major overhaul of players. There's going to be a lot of players going out, and there will be a lot of players coming in. In my opinion, they didn't back him at 
um, Chris, well, not Christmas, January, because 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 I don't think we could do. Um, they have to back him now, or or if they don't, we'll put it this way: if they don't back him now, they have to sack him. So it's back or sack, no crack. You know what I mean? Like oh, no. <laughs> that just came into my head. That no, oh, sorry, Steve. You're a poet, and you <laughs> didn't know it, Ian. Oh, no, 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 I did. Um, no, um, back sacking crack. Yeah, no, what was on about? Yeah, no, if they don't, if they if they don't back him, they're gonna, they, they might as well sack him because that will show that there's the confidence isn't there. They have to spend money. There is money to spend. I don't care what anyone says. There's got to be money to spend with the new sponsorships that have come in. They have to kick in in this new financial year, which or new new footballing year. There's the seller money. Um, I don't know whether Adidas comes in this year or next year, but the seller money alone, if you amortise that, is what is it like? Is it forty or thirty million? So times that by five, there's a lump of money. You know, um, if the reports are true and we, we, we you know, we, we get rid of a few players and we get a couple of quid in, there's money. We ha we have to replace five or six players that are going to be going, don't we? You know, I think I think we're going to push the ball out and go for it this summer. It wouldn't be the end of the world if we didn't get Europe, but I think with the new signings that we are hopefully going to get in in the summer, that we can we we can give the you know not the Champions League, no, the Champions but one League. of the two one or two lesser European competitions a good go. Um, you've got to be in it to win, aren't you? You know, and um, yeah, with the last ten games to go, every one of them games is winnable. Every one. Somebody made the point earlier about uh, the Conference League, you know, being winnable, and I think that's right. I, I mean, I genuinely think yeah. you know, West Ham, isn't it? This is it. I think it's equivalent to the Intertoto Cup. You know, it's it's very similar to that, and that only comes to mind because George and I have just recorded those were the days when Sir Bobby Robson's team <laughs> went to the final, and it, it. But it's very similar. The teams that are in it are all teams that we know, but they're not top tier teams, and the teams that you know that they're, they're there or thereabouts in their respective leagues, and it's a, it's a trophy that Newcastle could win. So, you know, Steve, I don't, I don't think, I don't think West Ham played a team I'd, I'd even heard of until. Three games until the quarterfinals, you know, like um, yeah, um, yeah. They, they were they were like no mark teams, you know. So we've got to be looking at that as if we get into that. All right, everyone will take the piss, and it's not like the greatest competition to win, but you know, we. I remember I remember celebrating the Intertoto Cup, you know, like I remember exactly where I was when when that happened, you know. And to be I'm honest, I'd take I'd take anything right now. Yeah, that's all we are. Okay, uh, we are halfway through the show. Uh, you're watching a UFC Matters Fans Forum. Time for the ads. A big thanks to all our sponsors, Skips and Bins. Go to their website, skipsandbins.com. Email inquiries at skipsandbins.com or telephone 0800 2545 253. Easy contract free and pay as you go waste collection. Thanks to Mr. Vicky's Sources, handmade in Cumbria. Go to their website, mrvickies.co.uk. Email info at mrvickies.co.uk or telephone 01768 210102. Thanks to United Group Travel. Go to their website, unitedgrouptravel.com. Email info at unitedgrouptravel.com or phone 01670 632 460 or mobile 0791 666 4174. They're a local company from Morbeth. And there are no strangers on our tours, just friends you haven't met yet. Big thanks to Media Arts for all the help with the video side of things. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, hit the subscribe button under the video. Click the thumb up to like the video and click share to share to your social media. If you want to help the channel financially, you can pay a one-off £25 fee. You get a cup, a scarf, a pen and a membership card and entry into the NUFC Matters monthly draw. Email john at nufcmatters.com for more details. Or if you've got a smartphone, scan the QR code now and it takes you straight to the membership pack. We also support the food bank on this channel. Go to nufcfansfoodbank.co.uk and you'll find the match day bucket. You can make a donation virtually today. You can also find us on iTunes, Spotify and other podcast providers. We also do events during the year, NUFC Matters Live. We'll be at the O2 City Hall on Friday the 2nd of August for an evening with Rob Lee, one night in Antwerp. 
Tickets start at £15 and you can get them from ticketmaster.co.uk. An evening with the entertainers takes place on Friday the 24th of January 2025 at the Tyne Theatre and Opera House in Newcastle. Telephone 0844 249 1000 or visit the website tynetheatreandoperahouse.uk to buy tickets today. You can also catch me on the North East Footy Breakfast Show live on Toon Radio weekdays 7 till 9am on DAB, Smart Speakers and the Toon UK. Dot com. Don't forget as well, NUFC Matters End of Season Party, uh, 20th of July, and you can get your tickets, which are £10, from NUFCMatters.com and NewcastleLegends.com. Super Matt and Gibbo uh, will be doing a talk in, uh, Ask George as well. Uh, a lot of the guys off here will be down there at the event, and the Long Sands will be doing an acoustic set, so get yourself down. All proceeds are going to Dementia Matters. Um, and Bev Reed's going to come along from the charity as well to have a talk. And Peter Beardsley tickets are now on sale on Woucher. Uh, you can get them for about £19. Uh, and get yourself on the Woucher. Just look for Peter Beardsley talk in, in Newcastle. Uh, plenty of uh, comments coming in. Lots of people uh, saying um, having their say on what they think may happen towards the end of the season. The two major European comps will have 36 teams in each. So the Conference League will be the easiest one to win. And if you do qualify for the Europa League this season, regardless of where you finish and Barry uh, who's in our show is, is is just praising the show thank you for this Barry uh, that's what this show is about Les anything else happens I'll never forget beating the Magnums and beating PSG still being highlights of the season onwards and upwards which is uh, it's good, a good point good yeah, there's, good there's one, always Barry. good points in the season yeah. um, Ian says now as a Newcastle fan I'm like uh, yeah let PIF do whatever they want as a football supporter I see the issues here and Davey Eddy says, all our new signings have started a total of 17 games so far this season. Disaster, really. And you must have read my mind, Davey, because that was a, another topic of conversation tonight. And Ian, we'll start with you, so you don't have to wait until the end uh, on this occasion. That is a hell of a record, isn't it? Um, that our yeah. new signings have only started 17 games. So, you know, when, when we do look back on this, would you say that the summer transfer window was a disaster? Because, you know, obviously, Tonali... His ban is up in August. You know, we'll see Tonali again. Harvey Barnes, you would think, hopefully, he doesn't have as bad a season next season with, with injuries. Um, you know, what, what, what's your thoughts? Was it a disaster? I don't think the players that we've signed are a disaster. But I think, the, the you know, what happened with Tonali, obviously, was a disaster. That's a disaster. You know, Tonali's going to... I think Tonali is going to come back and next season, and I don't know whether I said this, I think I said this on here the other week, Tonali's going to come back, and Tonali now, whatever his love for his previous club was, they, they, he owes them nothing now, but he, he owes us something, you know? Um, I think Tonali could be a massive, massive new signing for us next season. You see how good he was in the, like the first game of the season against Villa, and I and and I know I, you know I don't have a clue about when he found out if he knew that he was going to be under investigation or whatever. But my inclination is that he actually came into the club, and that game he played like the signing that I thought he was going to be. And after that, it sort of went downhill. So my, my thoughts are, did he find out after that game or shortly after that game that he was then going to be under investigation and did that affect him mentally? So I think just on Tonali himself, I think he's going to be, he, I, I honestly think he's going to be massive, like like a Bruno for us. Um, the other players, I think all of the players that they are going to be, big players for us, but I, I just think we've genuinely been really, really unlucky. And the the key injuries that we've had to key players have led other players to overplay and then those players have been overplayed. So they've got injured and it's just been like a self-fulfilling prophecy where, you know, they've all just, they've all broke down because the squad isn't good enough and big enough, which I know, you know, a few people did say, Last year, you know, the, the squad wasn't big enough, but I wouldn't swap it for the world. And they, 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 you know, I'd rather be in it and not win it. You know, who, 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 who on the panel here would swap what we did to PSG? You know what I mean? 
yeah. that night, that night yeah. was flipping brilliant, you know. And I think that like the, we've just got to look at the positives and say, yeah, write this season off. But look, remember, we're writing this season off, and we're still probably going to finish in the top half. You know what I mean? How yeah. many times have we, how many times have we finished in the top half in the last fourteen seasons? You know what I mean? So I think we all need to wind our necks in a little bit and realise that it is, it, it's a process. Um, and we, 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 it's, you know, we're not going to get there straight away. It's a five to 10 year sort of process as, um, you know, as Amanda said when she came in and we're, we're, we're right at the start of that still. So um, just because I think we overperformed last season, this season seemed a disappointment. But we, if, you know, if we if we nick, if we can get an eight, a seventh or an eight, I think that's a brilliant season, actually. No. Spenny, was the transfer window a disaster in the summer? Yes, it was a disaster because the positions what we needed weren't um, filled. We didn't get a DCM. We didn't get another striker in. We didn't get a right winger. And we didn't get a, a, de uh, a capable left back who were going straight in the team. Lewis Mark Hall is going to be good. Yes, he is going to be good, but he wasn't a direct replacement for Byrne and Taggart. There were the failures in that transfer with him. We had a failure of that transfer with him, and then he wasn't back. He wanted them positions. But, that was, but he's not going to, he's not going to drop down Byrne for the like, for the chance the left back, is he? He's going to drop. He's going to drop down Byrne for a world class to, to left back. I, 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 I don't think he, I don't think he would. I don't. I don't think a left back was on the card in the summer. I think it was. That's why they got the left back in Lewis Hall. I Lewis Hall, but we don't want to. We don't want a world class one. We don't want a world class left back to play in the Champions League, Darren. I, 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 I just, I just, I don't think that if you, he would not. He, he wanted Lewis Hall for the future. That's all he, he wanted. He didn't want Lewis Hall. Though. It was Ashford who wanted Lewis Hall. But just make sure I'm back in. Sorry. I don't think he didn't want to. I don't think he world class left back. He would never adopt. Do you need a world class left back? Bam Bim was always going to play left back the scene. If we're going to improve from the last season, the four players, we're going to get better players in. I know, but he's always going to. If you're playing in the Champions League, you're playing in four competitions, you're going to get better players in. You're not just going to get a young one in. Always going to play Bam Bim the scene left back. Well, not necessarily. If he got this someone else, in, if he play 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 play. In, he'd be playing him. He wouldn't be playing Dan Burn. Dan Burn would go in the centre back. No, I don't think you. I don't think you, want, you, want, you wanted one for the future, Lewis Hall. You think Dan? Do you think Dan Burn will be played at left centre back? No, probably, the possibly, gone. yes. Yes, no, I don't think oh, he will yeah. next season because he played Jamal Lascelles and Shaw. That's what he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you reckon? Yeah, because yeah, that yeah. that I think that I think is a disgrace to Dan Burn because Dan Burn kept Lascelles out of the side and was part of the team that kept us up and played really, really well in that position. How much did we spend in the last uh, in the summer window? In the last summer window? I mean, was it about, was it 80, 90 million we spent? Yeah. We got Tenarian, yeah. which we didn't know what would happen. So if we've got a 50 million pound player in, instead of two young ones, but don't get us wrong, them two young ones has got a, a well, a great future. But it's no good getting pick players in that's got a great future and you have to nurture them on in, in spending that lot of money we have on them. But we need players that will go into the team. To can I just say, and, because I know I've had my say and then I'll be then I'll shut up. I actually agree with everything Spenny said on there. And I think that all comes down to the outgoing uh, splitter. Dan. It's all come down to outgoings what we didn't didn't sell in players as well. The players would be uh, just pay, sitting on the bench or whatever they do, playing for a living. Not even bothered about what Newcastle is about at the moment. They're just talking about how, how, how many contracts they can get. Because they can't about anywhere else. For me as well, Tonali, yes, I agree with what Ian said about him. And I can see him being captain next season as well, instead of Trippier. Because he's got the experience of being a captain. And for me, I think he will will be captain next season. Whether or not it's another manager, I do not know. It's mm. all just in the air at the moment, our season and next season. To be of course honest. it is. All right. The question, Kev, was the transfer window in the summer a disaster? I wouldn't say it was a disaster. It was just underwhelming. Um, and I totally agree with Spenny. Um, we didn't get players 
where it was needed. Um, we have to, if you enter a season going into the Champions League, you have to have players that are better than what you already have. And I think down to, it's down to Eddie Howe in terms of his it's detriment in terms of his sentimentality towards players that got him there, which I totally understand. I get, you know, give them the right to play in the Champions League. However, if you don't buy play or get players that are better than what you already have, you stand still and you, there's no depth within a squad. So, and I think that's what we've done. I think we've stood still. Yes, we've had the experience of the Champions League. The PSG night was fa fantastic. You know, all the stories that have came, come across this, this season in terms of the injuries and this and that. But if you've got squad depth, then we wouldn't, we wouldn't be talking about it today. You know, because we would have those better quality of players. I don't understand why we didn't get the like get rid of like so the Jeff, Jeff Hendricks of the world, like a, a complete sale, not a loan. Yes, nobody will buy them based on the wages, what they're on and things like that. But those are the ones that fill in squad places that are basically hindering us moving forward. Because it it's takes a lot of stupid way conducts as well, Kev. Sorry, you get Kev. Well, that's it's stupid oh, conducts. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. You, but, back to that, so you go gave, back to that a fat boy, you give a contract to the cells, and you get yeah, a contract wherever it was. And in his contract, yeah. he said, when the contract was up, he could sign another one if he wanted to for another one year deal. That's why he got the biggy contract. Mm -hmm. And and I I wouldn't have given one. I would have go get another bet. You need you need better than what we have. We need Stuart better Claus than what we have. Stupid clause was his conduct, Kevin. It stupid clause by Penfold. That's that's I, news to me. But I'll take your word for that. I'm not going to argue. But uh, but again, if if you don't are not diligent enough within the transfer market, and I don't think Dan Ashworth, <laughs> Dan Ashworth was, I think you stand still. And, and again, it's like the, the Ashley mentality of standing still and not, and we'll just be happy where you are. Um, yes, there's all sorts of business dealings and monies and how much you got to spend and all this nonsense. But it, you can still find players who are better than what you have across. The, it's a big old world. You, there's, there's better players than what we have around the world than, than what we actually probably brought in. Yes, the Tenali signing, brilliant player, but unfortunately he's done what he's done. The Libramento one's probably the, the better one out of a lot of them because he's probably the Libramento's better. Libramento's been class. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, and then, but the Lewis Hall thing's a complicated one in terms of his performance. How many games can he play? What's, the, what's that complexity of that contract and that deal? You know, so... For me, you know, Harvey Barnes got injured, so you can't, you know, play him. So he's been, it's been hindered through that. Um, but did we did we really want him? I think he was this, he was the second man in based on of uh, James Madison signing from what you know what we know from our, from the professionals from Mitch and Stu what they said last last night. You know, so we were playing second fiddle to really who what our director of football really wanted. Because I think he's went down the young road and boosted our uh, academy, at, and the academy hasn't been boosted at all in one way, shape, or form. If they were good enough, they would be already pushing into a first team squad or pushing into into, uh, into the first team themselves itself. But again, we're standing still based on naivety and and all the above to actually push the board out, not fully, but enough to where we can improve our first team playing squad. And that's what led us down this year, in my opinion. So it's been very underwhelming performances. Yes, they've been up and down, but again, it's, it just wasn't good enough. And for the size of the club, what we want to be, you have to develop every year moving forward. Barry, you let us say down last week by the sound of it. Uh, reading the chat, everyone thinks you were more <laughs> last week, Barry. <laughs> I'm, I'm like still you said about the young, younger players. Younger players are bought by likes of Chelsea and Man City to sell on so they can, they can beat the uh, FFP rules. That's why. Yeah. So, Barry. Um, I can't wait to get Barry on them shots, them Jaegers. Barry, if you're sober, if you're sober tonight and you can make a comment about the transfer window in the summer, was it was it was it a, was it a disaster or, or are people being a bit too over dramatic? I I agree with Spenny. I think we the plan that they had, which seemed in hindsight to invest a lot in the younger players to bring them in, um, with a couple who were views to the future, i.e., Hall and Livermore. I think they it's backfired on us well and truly. Um, 
Again, they didn't sign a striker, which everybody and anybody says we we're crying out for. We needed somebody in case Wilson or Isaac got injured, which is exactly what happened. And how's comments of, well, we've got Anthony Gordon. He's a striker. Why do we need to worry about that? That was absolutely ludicrous. It just, we needed somebody just as cover. Um, I think we've been, at the same time, we've been really unlucky. I think Gordon, thankfully, he's played most of the season. I think... Um, the Vermento, the downside being Trippier was so good at the start of the season, he didn't get a game for quite a while. It took him a while to come in. Harvey Barnes got that horrendous injury. Um, and I think Barnes will come really good. I think next season when he's fully fit, I think he'll be an absolutely outstanding player. And nobody in their right mind saw the Tonali thing coming. Um, never in a million years. At the start of the season, our biggest worry is how the hell do you play Tonali and Bruno in the same team because they look like the same type of player. We never thought for a minute that this guy's going to disappear for the rest of the season. So it's, it's I, can, I can see both sides. I, I do think Ashworth looked at bringing in youngins. He looked at the, the strength in the academy in the under-23s and thought this is where it needs to be bolstered. And I think Spenny's totally right. I think we should have been spending money far more conscientiously on the players in the first-team squad who needed it. We could look at the youngins later. We didn't need them necessarily this season, but it's one of those things you can't do anything about. It's hopefully some of the young ones that we bought or these big name future ones that we bought will come good for next season. And there's a couple of young kids who look like they'll be banging on the door ready for the start of next season. So fingers crossed. I think it, it's it's split down the middle for me, Steve. It's partially bad luck and partially bad management. I, I would have, if it had been me, the first player I would have signed in the summer would have been a striker. Definitely. And I don't want to interrupt George because he's busy waving at somebody. Julie, Julie. <laughs> yeah. We're doing a show, I'm, George. I thought, right. I've got to make, he's I've got got a make bloody chat on the birds again, isn't he? Good old bugger. Got to keep your, your fans happy, George. Got to keep your fans forget, happy. Forget, forget he's online. Um, <laughs> I thought it was Ian's missus. I'll that's why I stopped. To, uh, ever, ever, he'll be jealous. Yeah, it'll be in, that'll be Instagram later. Darren, um, <laughs> was the summer transfer window a disaster? Um, yes, but I, I, I think it was a clear. I, I still see. I, I do agree with Lewis Hall. But for the future, he was always going to play Botman, left back, side down, being left back very all season long. Uh, Tino was a good signing, clever signing for one for the future. But did need a centre half badly. Uh, and we did need a striker badly, uh, and I think we need an, another centre cent midfield. But we've we'll, we'll, we'll got new players to sell after things so all like not. We signed the, we, we signed the we signed the class right winger, didn't we? And then we fucking send him out I, to someone else. I, I know, I'm, I'm, I know what I'm saying, but I, I, I still say it's. I like Lewis Hall. He's. I think you'll hope we get more chance next next season. I hope we do sign him. But I, I don't. I disagree. With, I like you, Spenny. But I disagree. I, I don't think we needed a world class left back. Um, it's my opinion. I, I know you don't like it, but you have got to respect my opinion, mate. Um, I, I expect your opinion, but all I'm saying is, Trippier was there, right? And you brought in Tino, right, as a replacement for putting Trippier, right? You brought Lewis Hall in, and who's he? Re who's he going to replace? I've already you... played him, midfielder, midfielder, left back. Right. Yeah. So I'm saying, but we don't know. We don't know that scene, but you've got to get. You for the way forward, you know what I mean? Like, especially now, you've got to but you, you've got to get them in the squad. For, and, and he's, I, don't, I just think I'd, I think Lewis Hall was a good signing like, personally, and then I do think you need a, like uh, Miley, he's one for the future. Again, I'll give him like less game that because he's been forced in this season. Like George said, he, need, he needs to get a, he needs to get a running coach, improve his running massively, box to box, so they've been a bit like in midfield, but um. It's an all it's, it's yeah, no, no, no one's seen that coming today. It's actually it's, 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 it's Newcastle's luck, but get the scene the way, and then I think you need about five players in and get rid of five if I can, possibly. My, my, my opinion, okay. Chip, what, what's your thoughts on the I transfer window was... in the summer last year? I think I scratched my head quite a few times, and I did the people's eyebrow quite a few times because I thought. I didn't like. I was confused by it all. I thought, you know, if Dan Ashworth couldn't sell a Champions League, Champions League dream to James Madison, then that was a bit worrying because, 
yeah, Spurs will offer more wages, but wouldn't you think playing in the Champions League would be appealing more than just playing league football? Um, I just, I, I, I think we, we'll, we'll, as Spenny said, I think we desperately needed positions covered for now, and we didn't do it. I think it was everyone could see, we, even Stevie Wonder could see, we needed a striker because we had two injury prone ones there. When yeah, the, the score goes on a day, but how many games do they play? It's when he had that third choice strike and we didn't get it in, and that was very disappointing for me. As I've just said, the fact we didn't get Madison in when it looked off, it looked over a ball of shot and we were going to get him as well. That was disappointing. Was Bond signed because we couldn't get him in? I don't know. Um, I think they trusted Dan Ashworth too much, personally. I think Eddie ha- I think they should have given Eddie Howe a bit more free reign regarding this. Um, Oh, considering what's happening now, considering one's still here and one isn't. Um, I just, I think the word was said earlier, I was underwhelming. I think I expected a lot more. And going into when the, we did the Seller Cup games at St. James, I was expecting us to have a few more players available and to watch. And I was just, yeah, I was underwhelmed by it all. I thought there was the space at areas which we needed, clear as, clear as muck, really. And we just didn't address it. And when you're going into playing three games a week, week in for three or four months per the season, it's literally a case of you need a squad and we just didn't do it. And that's inevitably what comes with the injuries because you, you can't play three games in a week no matter how you, how good you are. Um, but hopefully this summer that, that, that they'll learn by that mistake and we'll sign players and we'll do clear some deadwood off because... There is players coming in at the end of the... I think there's six players that will contract this summer, like so Dummett and Richie, who personally don't give them new ones. As much as what they are serving to the club, you can't keep putting them on the wage bill because they're wasting the space. Um, and then you've got players coming into the last year of contracts, like Longstaff, um, Trippier, Wilson, who may command a fee and who we may get a fee for this summer. Um I'm not saying they will sell them, but they're possibly... Their assets that will command something, you know, unlike the likes of Hendrick, who won't be coming back because he's out of contract. Fraser's going in the last year of his contract, so he, <coughs> um, so yeah, it was underwhelming, far too underwhelming for me. But like I've said, I hope they've learned by it for this summer. Okay, George, what's your views? Well. The lads have said it all. We, you, you lads on here yeah. have said it where we needed to strengthen, where we didn't need strengthen, and all the rest of it. And for me, it was it was nearly ignored. Um, and and some of the better signings, um, just there was just that horrible bad luck, if you like to call it. I'm not going to say turn all these bad luck because this is one thing that Ashworth should do. He should know what they have for the bloody breakfast every morning. Never mind just how good a footballer they are. They want to, he, he should be known what you know what soap they're washing the bath with, and he should know every detail about them. And to let that slip through that that, that the lad had a, an addiction problem, it's difficult. As I say, go back to me time as a magistrate. The one thing I do remember is people with that kind of problem. Very secretive. If you keep it away from my family, never mind outside. But I defy that somebody in, in, in Milan didn't know. And Ashworth should have been onto that. He really You're right. Um without without any any doubt. Um others I, I think Harvey Bonds is good sailing and, and we'll get the benefit of next year. And and remember some of the injuries that that were had. There were freak injuries. Harvey Barnes was. He'll he, he play another 20 years and never get that, that injury again. So, something that uh, very rarely happens. Um, and then there's others, of course, that uh, that have happened which uh, uh, were predictable. They're allowing them to do gym work on their own by the sound of it. And we've got two players with broken backs uh, because of stress uh, uh, injuries that they were doing. That's all you know, predictable. And we've got to get that got that very right it, it's very because it seems it feels very wrong at the moment um but we they, they didn't address the issues we, we we allowed the season from the start and then we repeated it in january with two strikers that have got glass legs you know it you're not going to get away especially as the lads are saying three games a week you know you may get away with it one game a week you're not going to get away with it with three uh, because george can i ask you a question serious yes. question this one 
Did you uh, did you think that Steve Wraith looked like he had a few cruciate ligaments on them videos of him playing by the side? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, never had a bad injury, mate. No, you're right there. Like you, you look, you look like Pinocchio with them wooden legs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, solid um, defender, mate. Solid defender. You were lucky. Yeah. No, you were, you were lucky. You were lucky that for that Adam was playing because like he, 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 yeah, he's terrible. I'm a, I might even come out of reply, re- retirement and play one of them <laughs> games if I'm invited. <laughs> hold on, anyway, hold on, hold on, George. Go on, go on, George. Finish up. The the top and bottom of it, is it was an underwhelming uh, effort in the summer and even worse in January. And when you added the two together, it became a bloody disaster, didn't it? Added to the injuries. And you know what? We couldn't predict the injuries, not all of them. But, um, you know, Young Andersons and, and Dan Byrne, two players that, that really seriously damaged their backs, doing doing work that uh, should be supervised always. They shouldn't be allowed to be doing work like that on their own. That That's just not on. Um, in my view, anyway, and uh, um, it's a combination of things. The, the 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 issues of the signings wasn't brilliant, and I have to say, I'm I'm not sorry that that Ashworth's gone. Come on, lads, how many how many months do we sat here and there was rumours that that Ashworth and 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 uh, how didn't get on? That that you know there was an issue between them. Um, that all can't be can't be imagination. Can't all be supposition. When stories like that fit, fit around a, a dressing room and an outlook of a football club, um, there's usually some uh, uh, truth in them. There's some, something in them, and it, it went for for many many weeks before um, Ashworth finally went. And how many times did, did I sit here and say, "Why don't the club kill it? Come and say he's not going to Manchester United, or he is going to Manchester United. He can get lost, you know." And eventually, that's what they had to do. Uh, but all of that um, didn't help uh, what uh, what happened to the club both summer and and in January and, and made made both windows a mess. The January window was a total mess, total mess. Uh, I, don't, was, I, don't, I don't think I had the money available to bring in, George. I honestly don't think I had well, the money. We didn't, Darren, we didn't need to. We could have got loans to, to support and what was loans. happening up front. We could have got loans to support what was happening at the back. Not many He's, though. Not yeah. We could have went to Saudi. We could have went to Saudi and got players for nothing on yeah. loan. Well, the irony, the irony no, is, I, I the irony really is, is we forced the Premier League to accept people good, being transferred from Saudi, and, and, and we didn't do it. We, we let everybody else do, do it except us. No, I don't think the story, George, is Shaw not doing his job. Simple as that. Oh, that's the other thing. Yeah. The loan manager is is it nice given the not safe for purpose. He's well, he's just not doing it. I mean, it's just not happening. Um, and uh, you've seen that uh, the, the the lad that uh, that went to Scotland. I mean, he, he's he only played about forty five minutes football all the time. Now, well, that's ridiculous. Mm. You, you know, come home if that's the situation. He's better playing for the under twenty threes than he is doing that. Mm. Um, no, it it. it it was underwhelming, and combined with the this, the uh, the January window, it's it's it really been a bit of a disaster. But uh, in my opinion, some of it avoidable, and and uh, uh, a lot of a number of the of the in, injuries are, are freak injuries. You know, even Butman's initial injury was a was a peculiar one, something that he'd probably never do again. Um, but uh, yeah, it. it Underwhelming's the word somebody used, and I think that's absolutely right. That's just about it. Um, it's it disappointing that they didn't seem to address the issues that that fans like like us could see were needed, and and just uh, over the top. And, and, and it, isn't it harsh? Um, Eddie Howes uh, did say that about Gordon, uh, and that's not fair. Fancy heaping on, a, on one of your youngest players the the the, uh, the burden of carrying carrying the, the, the front line when you've got two experienced players who should be there and aren't because they've got glass legs it, yeah. it really needed um it really needed it's a standby uh that, that could come in and and fill in and do it do a job for it um <laughs> well we, we had one but we'll let them go to nottingham forest didn't we <laughs> um uh you know that 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 
he, he, he was always a fill in, like 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 Rafa did with 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 the lad he brought for Nottingham Forest, the big lad he brought for Nottingham Forest. He didn't want to play him every week, but by Jove, it was matches where he did play. It was important, or when there was injuries, it was important. And and you've just got to have the bodies around. We just didn't have the bodies. It's it's all right saying they're not good enough, but you haven't got them. <laughs> you don't get the chance to see. So it was it was underwhelming, and, and uh, um, I should hope the whole the whole club learns from it. Um, and the other things we we'll, hope we're learning is uh, is to uh, be more serious about what we do medically, because uh, the clearest issues around there, which uh, um, which we don't know about, and and uh, keep manifesting themselves in. In all sorts of ways, but uh, um, yeah, under under underwhelming as, as somebody said it, and I think that's the right way to describe it. Um, just got not uh, there it happen again, and I don't think we will now. Ashworth's gone to be perfectly honest. Um, so I was never in any doubt. Once Radcliffe came to uh, uh, Manchester United, it, I, I knew straight away what would happen because Brailsford, who's uh, uh, Radcliffe's uh, hatchet man, uh, he went to school with Ashworth. I mean, you know, the the, the best buddies. <laughs> so where was he going to go? It was pretty obvious. Well, the clock has beaten us. Um, if Eddie Howe is looking for a centre half, don't look any further than this bloke. That is yeah. the highlight clip, by the way. Um, there was a couple of headers that in Ross there. Kent well. Newcastle tour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been a great show, lads. Lots of different opinions. That's what the fans' forum is all about. Uh, look forward to seeing George and Kevin on Wednesday on Geordie's here. Geordie's there. I'm back tomorrow, at 2 45. Talk of the tune with Sid and Rob. Uh, make sure you set a reminder for that. But for now, that's all from us tonight. Uh, good night, lads. Good Have a good week. Good night. Take care, guys. Easy.